It was the LFA championship. Uh, and if you'll remember, the weather was terrible. Don Overstreet White <clears throat> had an 8.23 as his locker and had a best five of 11.17. Tim Gold was second with six fish for 8.72. Scott Schrader, which is a name we don't oh, see yeah. up in the top yeah. that often, uh, had 7.63. Then his Fabinus had 663, and then it dropped to three pounds after that. Uh, I had, a, I got a big knot. Knot. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I tried to figure out what to do on a day after a cold front when the wind's going to be blowing 40 miles an hour. Right. What I have done and gotten away with and done fairly well in the past doing is throwing a big spinner bait and a big rattle trap. Mm -hmm. And not expecting anything to happen until at least noon and probably thereafter. Right. Which is, <clears throat> that's what we did, and sure enough, nothing happened. We <laughs> well, that was your original plan, I that remember, was, from last week, yeah, up in yeah. Little Caney, wasn't it? Yeah, Little Caney's where I went, uh, fishing the grass, that spinnerbait, uh, it, it normally would work. Uh, why it didn't, I don't know, but that's, that goes to show that the best laid plans of mice and men. Yeah. The guys that, <clears throat> that went up in the back of some of the coves and threw right up on the bike, the, the top of the winners. What they did, it's Don Street now caught his on a, caught his big fish on a chatterbait early, but everything else he caught, what Tim Gold, what all the rest of them caught apparently, was fishing with 10 pound test line and swim dingers mm -hmm. and throwing them right up on the bank and, and catching most of the fish in two, two and a half, three feet of water. Right. You know which on a day like that, uh, you wouldn't, that's not what you, you, conventional wisdom tells you you go to the creek and throw jigs and stuff like that, but uh, that hasn't worked. Hmm. Well, so what was your water temperature about that time? The water temperature was in the high 60s. Okay. It was still, it was still plenty warm. It dropped dramatically from what it was last week, mm -hmm. but uh, the guys that stuck to the, to the pound and the, the bike and throwing the little baits on light line, it paid off for them. Hmm. So, so we're going to check that out. Yeah, I'm going up this afternoon. Today's Monday. I'm going up this afternoon. I'll be ready to go out and, and I'll fish the the real light stuff tomorrow and Thursday. See, we don't know with the hardcore championship coming up. This is a semifinal. We'll draw for a section Thursday morning. Okay. So we won't know what section of the lake we're fishing really? until yeah, until Thursday morning. Oh. Nobody gets a chance to go out and pre-fish it. So I'm just going to pre-fish the lake fork side because we've got another LFA tournament next Thursday. It's the mm -hmm. last LFA of the year. And Jack White and I are in a neck and neck for uh, Anger of the Year. I mean, it's within one or two points really and he may be a little ahead but i need i need a i need a good showing <laughs> and he needs to fall flat on his back <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway that's i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna be prepared for fishing uh the the caney creek side and what if i find something that works on the caney creek side i can transfer that to the others yeah and, you know yeah. that's not a big deal so uh, but that's that's what my plan is, and I'm going to do it with eight and ten pound test line, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do it with spinning rods too, because you can't throw you can't throw that little light line very well at all on a bait caster. Yeah. So, huh. and I've got some spinning gear that I use periodically, so that's the that's the plan. And they caught fish in in uh, board tree. They caught fish in glade. No, no, I'm sorry, not glade birch. They caught fish in uh, Long Branch. Hmm. Those are the three that I absolutely know of. Yeah. The the winning the winning stringer I think came from Long Branch. Which way was the wind blowing during that tournament? It was blowing out of the northwest. I mean, it was howling. Yeah. You could look up the lake, and you could see the water just. Oh wow! <laughs> it was. Yeah. It really was. It was. It was about as windy as. It's like 40, what, 40 mile an hour? Is oh, we had guys that were 40, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's, that's tough. tough. Yeah. I mean, you throw, a, you throw a one ounce spinner bait and it goes. Right. It goes back over it goes your back head. Back over your head. Yeah. 
and a rattle trap, you, you spend about half your time when you're throwing into it, picking out backlashes, but that's you know, yeah, that's just the name of the game for that kind of year. And that, like I say, that is something that does work Yeah, that time of the year. I just, I think I may have pushed it a little bit. It may be, that may work better another, in another three or four weeks, obviously. Yeah. It, it must work better in three or four weeks than it does now. So. Huh. Well, this is what it looks like yep. Thursday, you know, when rain, uh, rain, chance, yeah, nine mile an hour, which you hope that's what it is. Yeah, west northwest, that's not bad. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just depends on well, and the where everybody's, you know, everybody's yeah. going to be. You won't know. You won't know until Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. There'll be a race for the boat ramp. Well, that's the benefit of y'all fishing every different third every time, you know, and so that's you learn the lake, and that's a, whether you want to or not, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's an that hardcore is that it, it's uh, yeah. really a benefit to you if you're trying to learn to fish the lake and the conditions, and I mean, you know, yeah, that's got to help, you know, during something like that. You know, yeah. if you just came in here and hadn't hadn't been work, you know, playing that, doing with hardcore, it would be a disadvantage, yeah. but. Uh, at least you got that, you know, a, a, a knowledge base for the, through the year, you know, fishing the whole lake. But, uh, <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> I'm ready to get back to a normal year, whatever that is, because none of my deep water places paid off this fall. Yeah. None of them. And even the shallow water places that I typically fish in the fall have not produced anything. So mm. I know where the guys are catching fish. But I really, and I really don't want to go in on top of them. But if we draw barks, I'm gonna be right in there in the middle of them. <laughs> you gonna have to be. That, 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 I have no choice. You yeah. don't have a choice. I mean, yeah. it's it's where it is. Uh, yeah. So you got JC Outdoors this weekend too. Uh, you gonna do that? No, or? I'm gonna pass on it. I okay. I, I just, I just I, now if we had a real good day Thursday and caught a bunch of fish that were you know good size, yeah, we might. But, Charlie and I both are kind of discouraged with, with donating and not for you not not not, not catching now, not not, catching not getting getting in the money. Yeah. Okay. And this team, this is, is the team yeah. deal this weekend too. Yeah. So. Yeah. So Charlie's kind of. Yeah. Saturday is would be a good day. Fifty nine to thirty nine, ten percent chance. But we'll just wait. I'll talk to him, and that that's subject to change. But that's my guess is how we're going to leave it the way it is. Because uh -huh. I told him until. Until the fishing, until the catching cranked up a little bit. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, this year's cooling off too, you yeah, know, and yeah. things are slowing down a little bit, so. Uh, and this has always been my favorite time of the year. Oh, really? I like the fall. Yeah, I like to throw a rattle, red rattle trap up there. It's, uh, you know, it, I get started off to a, to a really good start every year mm -hmm. because I'm catching fish when the other guy, they're, they're still throwing their little stuff but I'm catching them on, on the rattle traps. So yeah. You just gotta get get it a little cold enough to yeah. to make the transition. Well, it's probably not far away from that yeah. time, I wouldn't it, think. It shouldn't be, it should be. Huh. Yes, sir. Well, that sounds good. <clears throat> Got a little show and tell today. Okay. And uh, if, you, if you ever had a battery that, you know, just died and you just go get you another oh, one, yeah. you know? All the time. Well, let me tell you something. And I've never done this before. I uh, trolling over the batteries out or prime example. Well, if you look on YouTube, mm -hmm. there's some there's some remedies in there and I, I searched through there and it was I looked at ten or fifteen of them, but one old boy had a deal to where it was really simple. And what he did, and I I had a car battery went right. bad out here. Well, it was actually a marine battery, but it was on my race car out yeah. there, you know. And uh so I took what you do is you get a, a two liter bottle okay, like this and cut it off about two inches high okay. and you take you take a, a teaspoon and a half I mean a tablespoon and a half of this Epsom salt put it in there and then you get some distilled water okay. and you put that up to about you know about the top up there the best you can carry around you know put it in the microwave Heat it up to about really hot coffee, you know, like 160 right. degrees, you know. And you let that battery charge, you know, on, on your charger for, you know, about 30 minutes or so. That's what I did, you know. You take that, you, 
get you an eyedropper like this. Right. And if I can get it out, <laughs> it don't want to turn. There you go. So I wasn't doing it right. Yeah. Take an eyedropper, and you take one deal out of that. Or well, you put take two of them and put them in each one of them cells on that battery. Two, two squirts. Two okay. squirts. That's this is what I did, and then I came back and got a squirt and did about an extra ten per bat per cell. So you end up with twelve of these right. in each thing. And you sit there and watch that battery and it started charging. And what and what I understand about it, it descales mm -hmm. that those plates in that battery. Chemical reaction. Uh -huh. puts the, the chemical reaction puts the uh, whatever the ions are back in the water. Yeah. yeah, and it ain't that it just went up to the right uh, voltage, you know, because it was getting the voltage yeah. just when you put a load on it, it would go to zero. No you, effort, yeah. you, after that, you put the load on that thing and it's it's good. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. yeah, I kid you not. I don't know how many batteries I've thrown away oh, yeah. like that. Now, I don't know if it works every time, huh. but that was so simple. Now. If you look on YouTube, there's a bunch of people that take them, they turn them upside down, they empty them out, and they yeah. wash them out, and they come back, some of them put a, uh, sulfuric acid or whatever acid it is yeah. in those things. And, I mean, there may be a better way, I don't know, but this was so easy. But Epsom, I would have never thought yeah. Epsom salt would have done that. But it's charged up, and that what sucker's cranking. Salts? It's, uh, it's magnesium sulfate, what it is. Okay, the battery sulfite gets sulfited up. It's what happens. Yeah. When it gets scale, it's a, yeah. it's a sulfide scale in them. Now, you go down to Walmart, they've got lavender flavored oh, yeah. and all that. But what it is, usually right out in front of the uh, drug part of that thing. You can ask them, they'll show you where it's at. And it has nothing but magnesium sulfate in it. I mean, unless your battery's not smelling all that good. I mean, lavender's probably not something I'd want to use. <laughs> yeah, really. But uh, huh. anyway, I thought I'd pass that along. How and that's long, a, How long is the battery? The, it'll it's last. 2017, how old that battery is. But, but how long will it last from your treatment? I don't know. We'll find out. You know, I just did it this weekend, and it's, huh. I just cranked it this morning. It's, it's working good right now. That's interesting. So uh, my, my, my trolling motor batteries have a tendency to... You know, it's got a, they got a date tab on them, and when that date tab is passed, you right, know, they, they that's say, when they oh, die. It's time to die. I'm just wondering. I don't have any data. Or I haven't heard anybody say this, but I'm just wondering if that's a good way to maintain a battery through the years. Like maybe every year or two, do a little bit of that in there. But <clears throat> how much? So you ended up putting a dozen, a dozen drops. Uh, of dropper, droppers, you know, eye droppers, what it is. You get your regular eye dropper, a dozen of those per per, per cell. cell. I start off with like two at a time, you know, I went two, four, six, eight, you know. And then I started going one, two, three, four, all, all the way to ten, ten times for each one yeah, of them. Yeah. And, uh, but at any rate, I mean, hey, it's working, and I'll let you know when it dies. But yeah, that'd be uh, interesting to see. If yeah, really if it stays going, I shoot. Ah, uh, you know that's a deal. Uh, and then the other part of this thing, I just want to say something about Chuck Roy. You yeah. know our buddy last week. Chuck, what did he do to us? This was well. No, I was just going to talk to the Community Chronicle. Yeah. Uh, he came out with an article, and we'd like to thank Chuck. Yeah. Uh, I was in September's issue, and Bob was in uh, October issue. Yeah. And just a really nice thing for them to do for us, and a uh, really good picture of Bob in here, and and this mine's probably okay, but uh, <laughs> and then Chuck Chuck's other they actually print this paper, this magazine here, the right. Fence Post, you know, and just thought it we'd magazine. just yeah, it's really nice. It's a very very well done magazine that uh, Chuck Roy uh, has something. I'm not sure exactly what his title is in this thing. He's the publisher. The, he is the yeah, publisher. Okay. As far okay. As I know, yeah. And uh, just want to say something nice about about, about him for that. You know, yeah. we do appreciate him. And uh, yeah. uh, but uh, then the other thing, uh, that's about all I got. Other than I don't know if we will put this on the video, <laughs> but I've got something here now. This is Danny got me this. This is the the presidential predictor. Presidential. Presidential predictor. You don't remember that little. Black ball, oh, yeah. the eight, yeah. eight ball. Well, yeah. This is kind of like that on that version. 
<laughs> so like what you do is you turn it on here. And you shake it. No. No, it'll come on here a second. <laughs> okay, well, Chuck Roy catch fish this week. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got anything you want to ask? Will Bob Roberts catch fish this week? <laughs> Will Bob Roberts catch fish this Not week? Not even a little bit. Not even one. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit. Kiss of death. Kiss of death. Trump doesn't say it. <laughs>